Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and today we are going to the Richmond Goodwill Outlet, aka The Bins, where you buy everything by the pound. I recently moved to Virginia and this is my first time to the Richmond Bins, so I'm hoping that is good. Um, I'm gonna meet um, a new friend here. I actually met her on Whatnot. Her name's Britton. Um, I'll have her link in the description too. So she's gonna be my new Bins buddy. I'm so excited because I hate going to the Bins alone because they're um, sometimes in sketchy areas. So um, wish me luck. I'm gonna hopefully find some goodies to resell and flip for profit on Poshmark eBay and also with whatnot if you guys are not I know it's everywhere if you don't want to hear about whatnot I'm so sorry but I really I really do enjoy it um, and I'm basically living over there I just did a whole week marathon at the end of August early September and it's it's going very well so if you're following me over there thank you so much and um, if you guys want to try it out um, I will have a link in the description for $15 off of your first purchase um, and then I will also receive a kickback my my kickback will actually be $25 but if you let me know that you use my code then I will come to your show and I will spend my credit with you. So just putting that out there, I am sourcing on whatnot like crazy, like a like a mad woman. Um, because there's so many good deals, you guys. But I I have these shows that I want to do where there's lower starts, but I gotta have lower cost of goods. So hence we are at the bin. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get over. Get over. We're already here. <laughs> I'm already here. There's the goodwill bins in the background. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of the car, put my GoPro on, and see if we can find some goodies. All right, welcome to the Richmond Bins. These are fairly small compared to what I was used to in Houston. Um, I first made my way over to the shoes because the average selling price is always much higher than clothing. This bins location specifically is $3.50 flat per adult shoe and then $2 for each of the kids shoes. So these first ones that I grabbed are some combat style Clarks. This brand does sell pretty well for me and they were in good condition so definitely pick those up. I then spotted these glittery Converse and thankfully they were Converse because I just thought it was the style. I should be able to make about 40 bucks on these. Believe it or not, the glitter ones are very popular. I do actually like to sell men's items and Johnston and Murphy can do well for me, but I did end up putting those back later just cause the comps weren't that great and the condition wasn't that great either. Next I grabbed these Toms, another great brand and it's definitely bread and butter for me. I actually found quite a handful of Toms today. All right, these are some girls justice boots. It is a faux leather and the style was really cute. I figured I could get about 15 to 20 bucks on those pretty quickly since we are in the right season for them to be selling. Moving along, sometimes I will pick up universal thread but those you know definitely would not have been worth it and then I found these fun confetti pom-pom slippers and decided to keep those for myself for some house shoes <laughs> Bren, did you see these I did end up passing on the Suns Out Buns Out, Sam Edelman uh, little flip flops. Although the, the saying was very cute and it made me laugh, it, the condition just wasn't wasn't good at all, so I left them behind. Moved on over to the clothes, and um, I did find this orange loft tuna hoodie. It's very cute, and I personally really do enjoy selling loft. It is definitely an underrated brand. This is from a newer season and perfect for fall, of course, so I had to grab it. Next were these kids' brown corduroy pants. Corduroy is definitely a classic, um, especially during the fall and winter, and I do plan on doing a kids' show very soon on whatnot, so I needed to start collecting some goodies for that show. I'm thinking of doing like anywhere from like three to five dollars starts with that as well. Next were these moto style jeans, but I did end up putting these back based on condition. And then another cute kids piece for my kids show, these yellow overalls, but I actually did take these home, but I did end up missing a flaw on them, so I am re-donating them. This brand is called Weekend Traffic and it's actually a vintage piece and um, running comps, their dresses sell fairly well and I should expect about $30 on this. These were some old navy distressed jeans and a size 14, and they were from a newer season and the boyfriend mid-rise, so just great sellable features all around, and I should expect to get about 15 to 20 on them. I'm dying over here, I have so many shoes. I'm, I'm so excited. excited. 
You want some fake Dr. Martens? I was like, ooh, and then I was like, uh. So all the shoes came out from the one and only rotation that happened while I was there. Oh, here we go. Oh, we're going. Wait, do we have to go to all of them? I'll go down here. <laughs> yay, fun. <laughs> oh, yay. Oh my goodness. And I found a ton of shoe goodies. Um, so I had to go back to my cart off to the side to sort through them because you know, inevitably you pick stuff up and they have flaws. These were some Clarks that had a scuff on the toe and I actually debated about grabbing them, but thankfully I did. I cleaned them up and actually just sold last night during one of my Poshmark Live shows for $30. So uh, I'm so glad I did end up picking them up. Clarks is definitely a brand that sells well for me. The, yeah, it's uh, I'm not sure. Fine, it's... Dang it. No. Oh my gosh! They all like that? Another one! Anyway, sorting does take a long time. I do go through each item, scope out for all the flaws, um, just to try to minimize wasting any money. Um, inevitably, you know, I think I did end up, end up having to redonate four items. It's just inevitable. You will miss a flaw here and there, but shopping at the bins, your cost of goods is so minimal that you could just deduct that from your total items and your average cost of good per item maybe will go up a nickel or two. Um, but I did end up grabbing these Sam Edelman's and should get about $30 for them. And then maybe five whole dollars for that collection of freaking rubber bands on my wrist. Oh my gosh, what was I doing? <laughs> All right, um, two and a half hours later and successful Ben's trip. You're locked and loaded back there. Uh, met up with my friend Britton and had so much fun. So much fun. It's fun to have a Ben's buddy. So anyways, let's go ahead and hop over to the hall so you guys can see what kind of goodies I found here at the Richmond Ben's. All right, it is hall time. I ended up picking up, uh, let me check my numbers real quick. I ended up picking up 49 items, 49 resellable items from the Ben's. I did already sort through everything and I had one, two, three, four items that I am gonna have to redonate because I missed some stains um, or they just weren't in the best condition. And then I also had some items that I kept for us personally. I ended up picking up like a, a kitchen dish and then I got some re reusable bags. So I just completely removed all of that from the equation. Um, still kept my total so I could even out the cost of goods per item. So I ended up getting 49 resellable items, which I think is pretty good. Um, and my total was $107.29 cents so it ended up being two dollars and 19 cents per item so the richmond bins ended up being a little bit different so the shoes were just a flat rate um it was different for adult shoes and different for kids shoes they were still pretty affordable i think if i'm not mistaken i think each adult shoe was three dollars or 350 and then the shoe and the kids shoes were either a dollar fifty to two dollars um it is a few weeks later <laughs> regardless here we are for the haul um so we're gonna go ahead and get started i have already ran comps on everything and figured out what everything should be selling for like a nice little range if you guys are new to my channel i usually will show you my items try to provide a comp if i can which is just a, a comparable listing up on the screen um, of what i feel like i could actually sell these things for and it's just to show you that i don't find find the best stuff every time I go out thrifting. There are some people on YouTube and I'm like, how, how do you do it? I'm like, you literally find like the best items every time you go thrifting and I just don't understand. So I feel like this is more of a normal like thrift haul. A lot of this is bread and butter where the ASP is like between 25 and $30, which I think is pretty reasonable for most resellers out at normal Goodwills or uh, the bins are of course where you're gonna make the most money because you keep your cost of goods really low. So each item here was averaged out $2.19 per item. So just keep that in mind. This first item that I, but I'm not doing it in order of how I found it, but we'll do shoes first and then jump into clothes. I loved these. These reminded me of 1990s Britney Spears. Remember her and Justin Timberlake um, in their full denim? <laughs> Doesn't this not 
This is so vintage. This is vintage LEI. Here we are. So cool. Pick this up obviously based on style and the fact that it's like vintage. I don't, I mean, it looks vintage. The tag looks vintage. If not, just vintage inspired. But I will definitely tag it as, you know, 90s Y2K denim patchwork little ankle booties. These are so fun. Um, such a statement piece and I feel like a denim is such a great material. The patchwork style is very much in. So um, these, um, based on comps, there's some, depending on the brand, that sold for hundreds of dollars. But since it's LEI, um, I went ahead and valued this between $35 and $50 is what I will hope to sell them for. So I did see some around the $35, some around the $50. So I will probably price these around the $50 mark and accept about 35 so and this is of course before um, platform fees as well uh, which I will account for everything at the end at the end of the haul I will do an estimated uh, gross sales fees cost of goods and what I expect to bring home in profit and I usually try to stay on the low end when calculating that so I give you a range like the 35 to 50 when I calculate my totals at the end I always go on the low range just so you guys know all right and the next thing I these are all before cleaning and picturing and listing um so just <laughs> bear that in mind I just pulled these out of a package earlier so there are some little sequins on the to on the top of that but it's from another pair of shoes from another pair of shoes that you'll see here in a second but these are some Steve Maddens I um, I think a lot of people pass on Steve Madden, but they usually have some really good uh, quality materials. So this is the Midnight. Thankfully, the style name was on the bottom. These are a women's size nine, and the M is just for like the normal width. Um, it has a leather upper, so we have like the, the suede leather, and it has like a cute little chic cowboy boot, ankle boot style. Um, I just need to clean that off, clean that off, get the little glitter off this other shoe. But other than that, they're in great condition. Women's size nine, and it looks like I should be able to sell these between 30 and $45. This was just based on condition. I, I saw some that were in the upper leather was a little bit more worn that were going for like 25, 30. Um, and then some that looked like new without tags going for closer to 50. So I think that's a pretty decent range, but I do really enjoy picking up Steve Madden depending on the material that the shoe are made out of. All right, this was an interesting find. Um, I picked them, I would not have picked them up unless I felt them. They are buttery, buttery smooth leather. The brand is Sergio Rossi. There we go, Sergio Rossi. And then let's see here on the bottom, made in Italy. Oh, stop getting my face. <laughs> camera. Anyways, it is Sergio Rossi made in Italy. These are a size 36 Italian. So I think these are about a woman's size six, six and a half US, but beautiful brown leather boots, such like a soft buttery leather as well. There's just some minimal wear to the square toes and on the heels. I just need to kind of clean them up a little bit, probably get some, some leather polish on the toes and they will look in even better condition but even in this condition they look amazing anyways comps on these ended up looking between 75 to 100 dollars on similar styles and i did actually find a few that were like black square toe the same style that were selling in that range as well so i'm pretty confident that that actually might have been one of my best finds there was one point okay so they also did it way differently at the richmond bins way different than texas you had to stand in line and basically wait for them to roll out all the bins and that took forever and they had them all covered and so once they had them all in then they told you to go to the bins and like even out between them and then you still had to wait for all the employees to get the sheet ready and then on go they undid the sheet and then like you know four or five people could go into one bin at a time and then you could move around so that was a whole different setup than how it was in Texas um, which if you're interested on how um, the Houston bins are I went to all five within one day that was crazy <laughs> uh, but I will definitely try doing something like that again in the future if uh, my energy will, will hold up for that <laughs> We'll just try and do one bins at a time for now, but I will link that in the description if you guys have not seen that video. It was a fun one for sure. All right, these next ones are some Clarks. These are the collection. They're specifically the Ultimate Comfort Collection, um, and I have the specific style name on here. They are still selling, I think, online for $128 retail. That's what the inside looks like down in there. Hopefully you can tell. These are a women's size 11. So these are overall in pretty good condition. There is a scuff 
um, right here on the left toe that I do believe I should be able to get out. Um, but they have like a weather resistant leather upper. And um, I do expect I should be able to sell these between 35 and 50. I will always pick up pre-owned shoes, especially at the bins, because they're always so much cheaper. And my ASP for shoes overall is just, it's typically closer to like that 35 to $50 range. That's my bread and butter for most shoes. And I sell shoes all the time. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I definitely don't pick up super dirty ones anymore. I have gotten pickier over my last like three and a half years of officially reselling. I've been part-time for a long time, but I'm actually still slow. Slowly, I guess this month I'm I'm like officially a full-time reseller now um, based on my time commitment um, but I have been part-time like 10 to 15 hours or less for the last few years and now I've just personally recently gone full-time so all right another pair of Clark's these um, do have a flaw so looking up the stock photos there should be a tassel right here it's it's really not you know you wouldn't really know and the previous owner probably just took them off because they might have been a little too frilly for them but I really like the black pebble leather and they are a leather upper. I like the combat style, just really sleek. I like the little subtle details. Um, it is a women's size nine, the Riddle Avent boots. And it looks like depending on condition, these should sell anywhere between 25 and $40 for me. And I did try picking up more of the fall shoes since I knew at the time I would be wanting to list more fall and winter items. Um, however, I will always pick up all seasons just because that's just how I am. Um, I did pick up these Speedos. One, they'll probably sell in the summer. They're just a, a, a pair of water shoes. Anyways, I just pick up all seasons year round. These I did not look up comps for at the bins. I was pretty confident that they would do well, but looking up comps, it really honestly looks like they'll only sell between 10 and $15, but still, it's still 10 or 15 bucks, you know, turning two bucks into whatever, 10 to $15 is not too bad, but they're just some men's Speedo water shoes. They looked in pretty good condition. They're the Surf Walker Pro 2. Just a nice basic water shoe. I'll work on getting the correct keywords, maybe like vacation or water shoe, hiking, outdoor, and hopefully get those sold pretty quick. But yeah, probably only 10 to 15 on that. That wasn't the best pickup, but it is resellable. I'm in the business of, of business, so <laughs> I gotta make my money back. This next one was so cool. These are the um, the, the Ken's Birds of Paradise. It's a novelty print. Um, and Ken's actually do pretty well for me. As long as they're in pretty good condition, Ken's and Vans will do well for me. They will sell. And these also do really well on whatnot as well kids and bands have done well at least for me so these are women's nine and a half and i just really liked the fun like tropical vacation birds of paradise print on those love those it's a lace up little casual shoe there's the kids on the back and the bottom so um based on comps it looks like these should sell anywhere from 20 to 30 dollars based on the condition next up were the sanitas these are some danish clogs and depending on the style these can do very well this is the first time i have picked up this style of the clog and it's called i believe based on my quick comps this is called the sanja style anyways it is a wooden base to that clog it is a danish clog and it has like this really cool like textured knit tweed upper and like a multicolor. the comps kind of varied it looks like some people were just trying to get rid of them like you know their own personal closet and some people knew the value so it looks like i value these anywhere between like 30 and 40 dollars i should expect to get a, a gross sale price between 30 and 40 on those italian 40 italian danish danish 40 i'm gonna have to figure out the correct u.s conversion for that but um i like unique and different so i will pick up unique and different and clogs do very well all right so next up are these toms little lace-up sneakers of course i don't have them laced up for um today's video um but i will for my pictures um, I guess it wouldn't take me that long to actually lace them up. So these are a women's size seven and a half, I believe. Yep, women's size seven and a half. And the style on this is called the Carrillo Chambray Sneakers. And these are, I believe they're still selling online. The MSRP was about $75 on those. Um, just like a cool, casual, comfy sneaker. And you know, Tom's is such a great brand to support too. You know, you typically buy a pair of shoes and then they will donate a pair. So I usually try to pick up Tom's when I can, but I liked the, the minimal aesthetic of those. Um, these should resell for me between $25 and $35. Next up, this is the culprit, the, the glitter fiasco on my other Steve Madden shoes, but 
I almost passed these up because I'm like, who's gonna want glittery Converse? Well, y'all pick up your glittery Converse. So these are the all black Converse One Star, the Ox Glitter, I believe is the style name. Anyways, um, these will resell for pretty good money. So it looks like I should be able to sell these anywhere from 35 to 50, which is pretty awesome because you know, basic Converse will only go for like 10 or 15 bucks, but the black, I mean, those are fun. Those are very fun. They're in pretty good condition too. So, um, and these were a women's, oh no, I think they're, so they're a men's six or a women's eight. Very fun. This is like very like late 2010s, like with like the emo and goth scene. <laughs> I had to figure out some good descriptive keywords for that, but I was a part of that scene. So don't come for me. I was a part of it. I, I feel like my mom actually owned a pair of those glittery Converse. Just a nice way to have like that feminine edgy aesthetic. Um, all right, next up, I love picking up the style of Sam Edelman heels because it always does well. It's a classic. So the style name is called the Opal. O-P-A-L. These are a women's seven and a half. And uh, it's just the style of it, but it, of course comes in like solid colors, like black and nude, but this one is a black and like a gold shimmer. Very pretty, great for an event, date night, girls night out, something like that. Love the style of those. So these should sell anywhere from 28 to $35 for me on probably Poshmark. Poshmark is where I'm making the majority of my sales right now, but I am trying to get better about cross-listing, but for now, I am just Poshmark, 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 and a little bit of whatnot too. Next up are these Universal Thread. Aren't these amazing? I mean, some people will probably leave them behind because they were Universal Thread, which is just a Target brand. Hopefully you can see that in there. Hopefully, you might not. Anyways, the brand is called Universal Thread, but I love this color and I love the espadrille, the strappy. I prefer any sort of heel or wedge that wraps around my ankle. So I always make sure to note that in my listings. But this is like a really good color from the summer to fall transition period. Um, it does have some wear here at the toe that I didn't see before. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't see those. How did I not see that? Well, lucky me, I think these are my size, seven and a half. I'm gonna wear these. Wow, how did I not see that? They're, they, I was gonna say they were in great condition, but they're not. <laughs> I would have gotten about $20 for them, 15 to 20 if they were, but I'm actually gonna keep these for me, which is lucky me, because I actually really like that color. All right, next up are these Toms, more espadrille black upper. These are called the Monica wedges. These are a women's eight and a half, and overall they're in pretty good condition. I um, have the ankle strap there as well. I feel like I need to double check the espadrilles now. Okay, so that one's good. And that one's good. I can't believe I missed that like three times. These are actually, this style is actually selling pretty well. And it looks like the Monica Espadrille wedge in black online look like it should sell anywhere from 30 to $40 in pre-owned condition. All right, next up are these, I thought these were docks, but they're not. But this style does do very well. So this is a vintage 90s Y2K sort of chunky Oxford lace-up sneaker vibe. Kind of looks like Docs, which I might include in the description. That's a similar style, but these are actually vintage American Eagle. There we are. And it definitely has a leather upper. It's a women's size eight and overall they're in pretty decent condition. I just need to clean up the bottoms a little bit more before listing them. Um, but based on comps, cause there are quite a bit for like this style and for vintage American Eagle, should sell between 40 and $60 for me. Moving on, um, I actually did pick up a, a good bit of kids items because I was wanting to um, have a kids clothing and shoes only show for whatnot. Um, I am still collecting a little bit of stuff at this time. I usually try to have at least 40 to 50 items for each whatnot show, but all of these I think will end up being featured in a show. So these might not even hit my Poshmark closet because kids stuff actually does really well on whatnot. Anyways, first up are these kids Saucony um, running shoes. These are the excursions. Just a little lace up kids running shoe. And um, these are a boys size three. So I think it's a little boy's size three. And let's see, look like based on comps, these should actually sell anywhere from like 15 to $20 if I do list them on Poshmark, but on whatnot, they would probably go for like, they'd probably go for about 10 to 15 on whatnot. All right, classic. We have some Keens. I do recommend picking up um, kid sizes, like big kid sizes, because you can advertise them as women's on Poshmark. These do need to be put in the wash, which if you didn't know, they are machine washable. Just 
they are water shoes they are waterproof um so i do need to give these a wash but they are an army green they are a kid size five which i believe i think it's a women's either six or seven no between a six and a six and a half women's which is probably how i'll advertise it um but it looks like these are the classic newport the um h2 newport shoes from keen always love picking up this brand should sell for about 25 to 35 advertising it as women's if you advertise it as kids it'll probably go between 15 to 25 you'll, you'll get a little bit less but they still sell pretty quick i'm pretty sure keens for me there's a hundred percent sell through rate um year round too they do well year round all right next up we have these little cute marvel lineup sneakers i had to pick these up i'm like i'm doing a kids show i have to Every kid loves a good light-up sneaker. So these are just Spider-Man Marvel. Um, they don't have the insoles to them, but um, I just picked them up. They were so cute. Uh, size 12. So these should go for about 10. I would assume about $10. Is that what I had listed here? Yeah, I said 10 to 15 in my notes. I think a solid $10 for that, but it's still cute and I couldn't like leave them. And they're in pretty decent condition still as well. All right, next up are just a little kid's pair of Sperry's. These are just the lanyard boat shoes and they look like they're a size 9M, which I think is toddler, toddler nine. Yeah, because that's not nine months. That's too big for nine months. Yeah, so toddler size nine. Um, I just have to clean off this little sticker residue here on this other one. Um, but based on comps, actually, little kids' Sperry's were doing well for the, the tiny size that they are. Pre-owned should still sell for about 10 to $15. These are some little Ugg koala bear little booties. Very cute. I need to stuff them for the pictures. But typical shearling line. Looks like they did cut out the inside tag did Google Lens and what well, did Google Lens for everything. They pulled up Ugg and they feel like Ugg as well. Kid, kid Uggs, but it looks like these should sell for, I should get maybe 20, 20 ish, 15 to $20 for those. And then I had these, these were some Solomon's, some kids Solomon's speed cross shoes. And I was actually shocked. I know Solomon does really well for like adult shoes. My husband has gotten them and they are expensive retail. Let me tell you, they look like a big kids too. I would say Posh does a really good job of figuring out which one should be which. Anyways, comps on these were, were impressive for kids shoes. Looks like they should go anywhere from like, I guess like realistically, cause they're kids shoes like 25, but upwards to $40, 25 to 40 for kids little running shoes. And I picked them up for a few bucks at the bins. Isn't that amazing? They're in great condition too. Yeah, look at the bright blue bottoms. So nice, so nice. And I know retail, they'd probably still be like 80 bucks for kids shoes. Next up, I grabbed these snow boots. Okay, this brand Totes doesn't go for a whole lot of money, but we're going into fall and winter and I figured might as well um, help somebody get a good deal. Um, they are just a girl's snow boot insulated and they are a four medium, medium width. Looks like those should go for about 15-ish on average. And then the last pair of kids shoes, before I move on to the clothes, were a pair, I picked these up based on style. I thought they were really cool for a little girl. They, I believe it's faux leather. Girl size seven, faux leather, some lace-up boots. Just a fun like combat style and it looked like those I think should go for 15 to $20 as well. Let me double check my notes. Yeah, 15 to $20 on those based on my comps. Moving on to the clothes. This first one I grabbed up just cause it was, it was vintage. I, I dabble a little bit into vintage, but um, I'm not, I don't know. I just wanted to try it out. So it's vintage Old Navy, Old Navy outlet. And it's a women's extra small. You can usually tell by the tag. So it's like maybe late nineties, early 2000s. Just a fun little plaid button up shirt. It's in good gently used condition. And based on the comps, I couldn't find anything very similar to it, but I would hope to get about 15 to $20 for that with it being vintage Old Navy. I might be sitting on that till about spring and summertime though. All right, next up is a graphic tee. I picked it up based on um, just the funny little like meme graphic. And then the size is a 3XL. Um, and it says Paco Taco on it <laughs> in a cool like burnt orange, no, it's like a brick red color, but Paco Taco on a 3XL, I was like, okay, Paco, you're coming home with me. <laughs> 
you can come. 3XL, um, I've done some whatnot shows where people are looking for graphic tees and bigger sizes and I didn't have a whole lot. So when I was at the bins, I'm like, I'm gonna grab this just in case somebody also thinks it's funny. I think it's funny, especially if you love tacos. It'll probably, what did I make comms? Realistically, 3XL graphic tees, about 15 to $20. So that's all I'm really, probably about 15 is what I'm honestly expecting from it. All right, another little vintage piece. My friend Chelsea Sunshine always picks up these. This is a satin material. It is a vintage by Erica Taylor, size medium. It is satin, so it's not silk, but it's like that slip lace cami top. Not cami, this is more of like a tank top. That one should do, um, should be about 15-ish dollars on that as well. So, all right, next up, I couldn't find any comps on this to save my life, but I believe in it. I love the style of this. Look at the color. It is a quilted, it's a corduroy quilted, button-up vest. It is a size large, and I can't really tell if this is a men's or a women's. Leave me a comment down below if you think I should advertise this as men's or women's. I guess now that I'm looking at it longer, I'm thinking men's, but I couldn't find comps on it to save my life. It is made in the USA, which I will always include in my listings. It is 100% cotton and 100% polyester lined, and it's just a really fun quilted corduroy vest with like that fun printed fabric here in the front where the buttons are. I just thought it was so unique. It's really cool for like fall and winter coming up. I feel like this would be a very unique like wedding guest. Like it'd be a really cool statement piece. Um, so I couldn't find anything like directly for comps, but what I did find, I'm S and based on style, I would say I believe in the piece. So I think at least 25, but upwards to $40, I think would be fair for that based on style. Next up is a champion, just a simple women's size medium, quarter zip black running a sweater. Um, I just picked that up because those do very well in my activewear shows. But if I were to list it on Poshmark, it should sell, but you, oh, it'll probably sell on my activewear for about up to upwards of $10, but on Poshmark anywhere from 10 to 15. All right, next up is Talbots. This is like a cable knit button front sweater or open it as a cardigan. It is a Talbot size large and it's 100% cotton. Um, and based on my comps, based on my comps, it should sell anywhere from like 15 to $25. All right, next up, another fun fall piece. This is called the Tunic Hoodie by Loft. Love this fall color. I probably should get this listed pretty quick. It's a size small. Is it an SSP, small petite? That means it's my size. <laughs> it's a tunic hoodie, so it's like a sweater, but with a hood, but it doesn't have like the jacket little strings on it or a hoodie pocket, but I loved it. It is actually 100% rayon, good condition. Um, and based on my comps, anywhere from like 20 to $30, it is a newer piece loft. And I think because we're in the right season, I could get closer to like 25, 30. I think $20 is a fair price for that. Next up is who, what, where, size, large. Just a fun mock neck animal leopard print sweater, women's size large. Um, who what wear just sold at Target, but um, usually a quick flip for me with the animal print sweater, especially this time of year. So about $15 on that. Um, next up is another Target brand. Can you tell? I mean, people love their Target brands though. Please, please do not come for me. <laughs> this is good. Fellow extra large, men's extra large. I know there's a spot on it that I need to um, just clean up a little bit for listing. It does have a wool blend with the contrast. Um, and then other than that, it's just a nice puffer. Kind of like streetwear for um, the fall and winter. That should sell for about $15 to $20 as well. Next up is this vintage Ann Taylor, recently dry cleaned, and it is a linen blend, 55% linen and 45% rayon. It is like this soft orange pastel color, pastel orange. And is it a three button blazer? Yeah, I love blazers. Blazers are very much in, cool vintage style. Um, I couldn't find exact comps on this. It's kind of hard when it's vintage, um, but I would expect maybe 30 to uh, I would say 25 to 40 on that. Yeah, so, so 25, 30 dollars on the Ann Taylor um, based on what I found. All right, next up is a vintage brand called Weekend Traffic. Um, I don't know, it's not, it might be early 2000s. It's a size large, 100% rayon, and it's like a fun, it reminds me of Jam's World, like just a fun tank dress. It's about knee length. It'd be really cool for like vacation, resort wear. Um, it has like this little, like, where was it? Like a little martini olives. There they are. And then I think, I don't know if this is supposed to be like citrus 
you guys tell me, are these supposed to be like retro citrus print or is it more of like the little umbrellas, like the little tropical umbrellas that you put in your drink when you're on vacation? Let me know, what do you think it is? But regardless, it looks like that Weekend Traffic brand consistently with dresses of the same like style. 25 to $35 on that, which I thought was amazing. Next up, um, I did pick up a few kids items for my kids show. I grabbed this, just a little Pikachu graphic tee. Should go for about five to $10. I think that's what I wrote for all of my kids stuff. But yeah, how fun, kid size small, five to 10 bucks on that. And Old Navy, size large. I thought that was fun, little gingerbread man getting beamed up by an alien cookies. Long. <laughs> Saying that in my YouTube video. <laughs> um, it is on a Navy Navy base and it's a size large kids. Five to ten dollars on that. This is like a kids Marvel size seven. Just a fun Spider-Man with Christmas lights with like the thermal sleeves. Thought that would be fun for the upcoming Christmas season for somebody that's obsessed with Spider-Man. <gasps> it could go well. I could do a combo. I don't know if that's the same similar style, but same size range. That could work. And then this, I was actually surprised at comps on this. Some of these dresses for women and for girls was going for pretty good money. Ocean Drive, size small. I have no idea where it's sold, but I just thought the little style was cute for, you know, if they went on like a a family trip to the beach for pictures. You know, families like to do family pictures. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, black and white monochromatic little pineapple print. I think I priced that at $15, 15 to 20 on that, believe it or not, 10 to 20 is what I said, because it is kids. Um, but the brand actually did surprisingly well. So if you see it in a women's dress, you might want to run comps. And then last, this needs to obviously go through the wash, but a fun fair aisle with a pom-pom little Columbia, love Columbia, little beanie. That should go for about 10, what did I say? I said 10 to 20, but realistically probably about 10. All right, and then last category were pants, jeans, bottoms. And I personally love picking up jeans and pants and bottoms, especially if like, if it's a more of like a mall brand or well, not even that. If it's more of like a like a Target brand or an Old Navy or just something that's considered lower, I always look for like the bigger sizes because you can actually get pretty good money on them. For example, we have Old Navy. These are fairly recent. These are the sky high short in an extra high rise. And these are a women's size 12. But look how cute, just like a light to medium wash denim, distressed hem, has a button fly on it. 12 is more of a normal size here in America as well. Um, and what did I price these at? Yeah, based on comps, these shorts from Old Navy should still sell for about $15 to $20, which is very similar to a lot of other denim brands. All right, next up is a new with tag loft outlet. Love picking up new with tag loft. Really fun. This might not, this might wait until spring and summer to sell, but I really liked um, the colorway on that very like sage and pastel pinks of that floral. Um, it looks like that should sell for about $20. Next up were these men's lucky brand. I love picking up men's lucky brand. The women's really isn't selling very well for me anymore, um, but the men's lucky brand is. So this is a 36 by 30 and the 121 slim. Um, the back tag was removed, but I don't think guys really care to be honest with you. Um, but it looks like these should sell anywhere from 30 to $40. So don't pass, don't be sleeping on the men's, on the men's jeans. Go and check it out. Seriously. All right, next up, I couldn't find exact comps on this because it's just very particular with the stripe, but these are some Hollister ultra high rise mom jean, but with like that cool, like nineties red and kind of reminds me of Tommy Hilfiger. Um, the red and navy blue stripes on the sides. It is a women's size 25. And based on comps, these should still sell for about $25 to $30. All right, next up we have Vintage. I need to do some sweater shaving on this, but we have Vintage The Limited. Did you guys know that The Limited is not even a thing anymore? But this is Vintage The Limited. Hopefully my camera wasn't washing it out. It is a women's size two. It looks like a skirt, but it's not. They're shorts. Look at that. It's a fun like emerald green and pink plaid. Very preppy, very preppy. 
uh, it has some fuzzies all over it. I do need to sweater shave it. I couldn't find exact comps, like such a specific style and it's vintage. But just on what I could roughly find, I should hopefully get about 25 to 35 on those. Um, we have some more Old Navy jeans. These are the Boyfriend Mid-Rise. And they are a distressed with a released raw hem. And these are a women's size 14. So a a bigger size and what did I have that comped up and these with them being in the bigger size and being the distress these old navy jeans should still sell for about 20 to 30 dollars and then we have some old navy active some camo shorts I picked them up because they are size large I probably would not have I would have passed on them if they were anything smaller than a large honestly but they were in good gently used condition should still go for about 15 dollars these are vintage and they do have some marks on them. I'm gonna try and get them out in the wash, but this is vintage DC made in the USA. And um, based on comps, usually their overall denim bibs sell for pretty good money, but their jeans can as well. These are, I think these are a men's 32, 34. With more of like a straight, slightly boot cut. I think the back makes them stand out. So I would definitely want to do a front and back picture on those. Um, I don't know. They might be women's too. I need to do some more, some more research on those. But based on those comps, on the few jeans that did sell, it looks like it could be a range anywhere from 35 to 50 on those. What made me want to pick those up is one, I could just tell that they were vintage, but the made in the USA usually helps something sell a little bit more. All right, next up is a new tag item. This is the brand Max Studio. Just sold at Macy's, but a nice closet staple, a high rise pair of black plaid trousers, new tag. The MSRP was $98, I believe. These should actually sell anywhere from about $25 to $40. And then two more. I had this J. Crew. It's like a pink and red gingham little skirt. I just thought that was fun um, for Christmas or for Valentine's Day. It is just a viscose and cotton blend. I do need to sweater shave it a little bit, but um, I like the pockets in the front and then just the, the very similar colors, but still slightly different. Um, and based on comps, that should sell for about 20 to 30. And then finally, not on season at all, um, but these are some five o'clock somewhere swim trunks, the men's swim trunks. They are a 2XL. Just a fun like Hawaiian floral tropical print. Um, I didn't look up based on brand, I just kind of did it, looked up comps based on style. Should be about 15 to 20 on those. So the expected gross sales that I had originally was $1,033 on the low end. So, you know, if you wanna take away $15 from that, from those sandals from earlier, then we're at what, 10, 15. My cost of goods for everything was $107.29. And ex assuming everything sold on Poshmark, which has 20% fees, um, that would roughly be $206.60. On the low end, I would expect a profit about $719.11. So that's on the low end. Of course, everything, there are gonna be a lot of these items that sell closer towards my high end. So I would just say a nice average ballpark would be between, I would say about 800. I would probably expect about $800 realistically from this haul. Um, but on the low end, probably 700. But even at that, um, it really only took me a few hours to find all these items. I was at the bins. I actually uh, met up with one of my friends from Whatnot. Her name's Britton. I'll have all of her stuff linked below. She's not on YouTube or anything, but if you want to check her out on Whatnot um, or any of her other platforms, then I will leave her linked in the description. It was fun to meet up with somebody, and it's just nice to have a bins buddy. And she's in the she's from the area, so it's just nice to have her explain things to me since I'm new to the area. And then I'll be off to another area eventually because my husband's military. If you guys are new to my channel, I move around a lot. But anyways, about $800 I would say here um, from all of these items, I'm gonna work on getting these listed up within the week and they should actually almost all be listed by the time you're watching this on my channel. And if they're not, actually some of these might go into my first Poshmark live show. I'll have to figure it out, but it is my goal. These are all, these are gonna stay here out in the open. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to um, get all this listed. But anyways, regardless, thank you guys so much for being here. I really hope you enjoyed the thrift with me portion and the haul. Let me know in the description, what is your favorite? Do you enjoy 
just the thrift with me and the full haul? Do you like to just have the highlights through the thrift with me? Do you like to have them separate videos? Let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, that is it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for being here and I hopefully will see you in my next one. All right, bye. Oh.